Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Why don't we stand and we'll begin with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together as a community of believers. We ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill this place to move in our hearts and meet us where we're at. Lord, help us to leave our worries, concerns, and burdens at your feet and freely lift our praises to our loving God, who faithfully meets our every need. Amen. Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8 says, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. May we have this confidence in our God. This world is not 
Dear friends, let's let the goodness of God embrace us by confessing our sins to him and receiving the free and full forgiveness that he gives us through his son, Jesus Christ. I invite you to speak with me the words that appear on the screen. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen to your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Dear friends, I have good news for you today. Not only has Jesus taken away all of your sin, guilt, and shame, and given you forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life with him, he has also given you the gift of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit lives within you, he will help you to live your life to its fullness in faith and glorify God. Rest in the peace and the joy of your salvation. Amen. You're welcome to sit if you would like, otherwise we'll continue with our next song. Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and I'm a first year confirmation student. Today I will be sharing my confirmation projects. Last year, during my winter break, I didn't have much to do, so I thought, <laughs> so I thought, why don't I make myself useful and shovel some snow? So I started shoveling some of our neighbors' driveways and sidewalks. One neighbor came home later and was so surprised that their snow had been cleared. She somehow found out it was me through her security system. She texted my mom and was so thankful I helped her. Another neighbor saw me shoveling her, his driveway and he actually gave me money after I finished. So every time it snows, I try to help out the neighbors, especially just in case they give, give me the money. <laughs> wow. 
Just like my brother, I helped out at the Langley Food Bank. I sat at the front desk and gave each family two big thermal bags to store in their food in. They got rid of their plastic bags and replaced it with thermal bags that can be reused every week to keep their food cold. It was a little awkward talking to, to them at first, but I eventually got the hang of it. I met a lot of families and I got to see how much the food bank helps people. It is different than other food banks because they're a Christian organization that rely on God to help provide food for everyone. At church, I have been a live stream camera operator since, ever since COVID and I also help lead songs during Sunday school. It is fun and enjoyable. One Bible verse that I like is John 15, 12. It says, this is my commandment. Love each other just as I loved you. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Today's reading is from John chapter 16, verses one to 15. I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith, for you will be expelled from the synagogues and the time is coming when those who kill you will think that they are doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I'm telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer, but now I am going away to the one who sent me and not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because what I've told, of what I've told you. But in fact, it is, the best, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me, Righteousness is available because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more that I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Hi, you can see that I'm not at church today. I'm away, and sometimes when we go away, we need someone to come and do all our animal chores. So. What I thought would be helpful is if I did a video of all the different chores, so then everyone would know how you have to take care of our animals. Cats have to have food and fresh water, and I have to clean their cat litter, but I won't show you that part. So these are those baby chicks from Easter. I don't know if any of you saw when I brought them to church, but they've gotten really big. So we have to make sure they have fresh water and I have to fill up their feeder. This is the hen house, the big hens. I have to make sure they have enough food and I get to collect their eggs. Found one. And another one. And they always have water. So now here I am at the sheep. They have lots of grass right now, so they can graze, and they have an automatic waterer. But I've just given them some cob, and they really like that. It's a treat. <laughs> and then there's Kevin. So the thing is, when I'm away, somebody needs to take care of the animals, and you'd have to know how to do it. The disciples had been taught by Jesus, and he was with them. When he was saying goodbye to them, he was comforting them and saying, don't worry that I'll be gone. I've given you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that knows what to do. The Holy Spirit is the guide. Just like someone has to come and care for my animals and know what they're doing, that's who the Holy Spirit is for us. The Holy Spirit can guide us, help us to share about God's love. I think that's a wonderful gift. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides us. And we know that it is through you that we have this great gift. And we thank you for that. 
In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone. Now you know how to do my chores. I've got some vacation coming up. I'll see if I need you to come and help. So, uh, children, there is uh, children uh, Sunday school today. So follow Lisa, and uh, she will uh, uh, lead you onward. You gotta admire the chutzpah of having a children's lesson and an advertisement slash training session uh, all in one for the next time you need help. Um, I wonder if I... Save the video. Right? Save the video, yeah, exactly. Um, I wonder if I could do that somehow, like think about it, see how it goes. Uh, the, um, if you wanna follow along with today's message, there's sermon notes on our church app. There's something else I want to show you on our church app that's new. And that is, if you go to our church app, you'll see this uh, new tile, the Discipleship Bible Study. And if you click on it, you will come to uh, another page that describes how to do something called a Discipleship Bible Study. So in the past, what we've done is, our thinking was we bring people to church and we disciple them there. Uh, but with a Discipleship Bible Study, you can uh, disciple anyone, anywhere, at any time. All you need to do is, uh, in a group of two to maybe five people, uh, read a Bible passage together. And then uh, there's three questions that you can each take turns uh, answering. And uh, those are, what does this passage tell us about God? What does this passage tell us about ourselves? And then how are we going to live this out? How are we going to live out uh, what we learn from this passage? And so the Bible is the curriculum and the Holy Spirit is the teacher and uh, it does help people grow to God, uh, grow closer to God um, as the Spirit works through his word. So anybody can do it. Uh, let's pray. Gracious Lord, uh, we thank you that we can gather together and uh, reflect on your word. We thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for the gift of your spirit. And so we pray, Lord, that uh, as we do that this morning, you would help us to hear what it is that you were saying to us, that you would plant your word deep in our hearts and help us to live by it. For you indeed have the words of eternal life. In the holy and precious name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, we ask this. And all God's people said, Amen. So I'm going to tell you a story that's been told. There once upon a time, there was a mother who had a son. And from the time when he was six years old, she would encourage him every day to make his bed. And every day, he didn't make his bed. And then one day, he's in grade 12. A lot of years have passed. He's 18 years old and uh, his mother walks by his bedroom with a hamper full of clothes and she glances to the side and she sees that his bed is made. And she is so surprised, she drops the hamper of clothes and she can hardly wait till he gets home from school and he asks, she asks him, why? Did you start making your bed this morning? And he goes, well, it's because I was watching this YouTube video and this guy was making a speech and he said, if you want to change the world, start by making your bed. And that night when the woman's husband came home, he could hear her weeping in her bedroom as she cried out, why, why, why? Now, that was entirely a work of fiction, and any uh, similarity to anybody living uh, now or in the past was uh, totally coincidental. But it makes a point, and the point is this. Why is it that we have people around us who love us and know things, and they try to impart their wisdom to us, and we don't receive it? 
even though they may tell us repeatedly, until someone like, I don't know, out of the blue, says the exact same thing to us and we go, oh yeah, that's a really good idea. I'm going to start doing that one today. Why does that happen? I don't have an answer to the why question, but it's an important issue because what we're talking about here is wisdom. And wisdom is important at all times, but it's especially important during tough times. Because what happens during tough times is this. We are in the midst of a crisis, and at some point, we are likely going to have to make a serious decision. Probably one with life-changing consequences. And as we are making that decision, what we need is wisdom. But then the question is, whose wisdom are we going to trust? Oh, this clicker is helping me to pray more. Maybe uh, who knew? I could get you to advance the... There we go. Thank you. Whose wisdom are we going to trust, ours or God's? And so uh, to help us as we reflect on that question, we're going to be thinking, looking at John 16, 1 to 15. And so if you have a Bible or a Bible app, I invite you to turn there now. And this um, passage is again set uh, on the night when Jesus was betrayed. So within hours, he would be going to the cross. Uh, so it's a night where the words Jesus say carry a huge amount of significance. And he has uh, washed the feet of his followers and to model servant leadership, he has told them that one of them will betray him. He has told Peter that he will deny Jesus. Uh, he has promised them also the Holy Spirit. And so there's a whole bunch of things coming at Jesus' followers, and some of them are really upset. And as Jesus uh, is telling them all of these things, he uh, then says this. I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith, for you will be expelled from the synagogues. And the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. So what is Jesus saying here? He is telling his followers that they are going to experience religious persecution. They are going to be persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ. And this persecution is going to take two uh, forms, you could say, or it has two kinds of consequences. One is a, a, a social form of persecution. So when someone is uh, put out of the synagogue, what that means is they're cut off from the community of faith of which they were a part. That group of people that supported them and loved them and encouraged them and with whom they shared common beliefs up to the point of Jesus anyway. And now they are cut off and cast out from all of those people. Kick to the curb, you might say. So that's one part of it. But then there's another part of it. There's the, one, the physical consequences. And right now, in many parts of the world, people who follow Jesus can be and are being killed because they believe in Jesus as their Savior. And one of the important things we're doing together as a congregation is to help rescue at least some families from that situation through our settlement ministry. But even in Canada, there's kind of a subtle form of this kind of persecution. If you're working at a job and you start to face the threat of losing your job because you are a Christian. 
And you need that job to provide for your body, your family. That is a form of physical persecution. Because the consequences will harm you physically. So that's one thing that Jesus is saying to his followers. You will face persecution. But he's saying something else. He says, but now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. Now, all of us will experience, I mean, human life being what it is, all of us will experience grief at some point. And there's many different kinds of grief. There's grief over the loss of a dream. There's grief over the loss of a relationship. There's grief over the loss of health. There's grief, grief over the loss of a loved one. And there's grief when we have to face our own mortality, as all of us will. But the grief that Jesus is talking about here is a very special kind of grief. And we could say it's facing those things, but it feels like God is absent. It's easy for us to trust that God is with us when the sun is shining and the birds are singing and everyone around us is healthy and wealthy and wise. But it is quite another thing to believe that God is with you when you are in the depths of the darkest valleys. And that's the kind of grief that Jesus is talking about here. So he's saying that we will face uh, grief uh, because God is absent, and he's saying that we will experience uh, persecution. Those two things will happen to us. You can count on it. But, and this is so very, very important, but we do not need to face those challenges on our own. In fact, we dare not even try. Because if we try to face persecution or a grief over God's seeming absence in our own strength, it will crush us. And one of uh, two things will happen is we'll either be devastated or we'll abandon our faith in Jesus, saying the cost is too high. So Jesus continues on to tell us why we don't need to face these things on our own. He says, um, there, he says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate, the advocate won't come. So again, he's referring here to the Holy Spirit and some translations use the word advocate. Uh, others use encourager or helper. Uh, but he's saying if he doesn't go, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So what is Jesus saying here? He's saying that with his death on the cross and his resurrection, and then his ascension into heaven 40 days later, he is going to be at the right hand of the Father, co-ruling with him ruling as his co-regent, his crown prince. And because he's at the Father, so last week we talked about how he is our advocate with the Father, he's also at the right hand of the Father, uh, has the power and the authority to send the Holy Spirit to us. And so that's what happened on the day of Pentecost, which we celebrated a couple weeks ago. Uh, God poured out his Holy Spirit on all believers. And so we live in this in-between time. We live in this time in between where Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He has paid the full cost for
for the redemption of all of creation, but all of creation hasn't been redeemed yet. And so he's going to come back, and he's going to bring that redemption to fulfillment. He's going to defeat death once and for all. He's going to banish all evil. He's going to raise us from the dead, make our old dead bodies new again so they'll never grow old, never get sick, never die. And we will live with Jesus in the new heaven and earth forever. And during this in-between time, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the encouragement, the comfort, the help of the Holy Spirit to help us to trust that Jesus not only paid for our sins and defeated death for us, but that he is going to come back to this world in a visible way and make us and all things right. So the Holy Spirit does all of those things, and Jesus is saying, that's why it's good that he's going, so that he can send us the Holy Spirit to carry us through this in-between time. But the Holy Spirit does even more than help and encourage and comfort us. Jesus goes on to say, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has been judged, already been judged. So uh, what is Jesus saying here? Let's break it down a little bit. What he is saying is this, that the Holy Spirit is the one who convinces us and others about some very important things. And those things are sin, or in other words, what is wrong, righteousness, or in other words, what is right, and big clue, it's God, not us. We like to think we're right, but we're wrong. God is right. And then finally, judgment, which is actually consequences for right and wrong. Or we could even see the straightening out of all that's wrong to make it right. And the reason why this is so very important, this work of the Holy Spirit, this convincing or convicting work, the reason why it is so important is that if we're not convinced by the Holy Spirit about what is wrong, if we're not convinced that about what is right, that is God, and if we're not convinced that there's going to be consequences for right and wrong, then there is no way that we will ever reach out to God. And that's really what we need, is to reach out to God. Jesus goes on to say that, uh, say the, this, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. And so the Holy Spirit will teach us God's truth. Now, this is not truth primarily in the sense of knowledge, which is how we usually think of it, though it is that. But it is truth in the sense of how we live our lives. It's truth in the sense of walking with God. And as we walk in the truth and live in the truth, then our lives will glorify the Father and the Son because the truth that we're living in comes from them. So what does all of this mean for us? Well, it means, uh, first and foremost, that we need to be prepared to pay a cost for following Jesus. 
Uh, here in the Western world, we may not like to hear that, but it, it's, the, it's the truth. There is a cost for following Jesus. And it's a high cost. It's so high that the cost will feel like death to us. It may be, the cost may be the approval of people from whom we want approval. The cost might be some kind of special status or position we have. It could be a financial cost. But whatever cost it is, know this, dear friends, it is an old life cost. And the reason why it's painful is because we are attached to our old lives and we want to hang on to them. But the death of our old life is the cost that we need to be willing to be prepared to pay to follow Jesus. And what happens is this, that as we are standing there at the very end of all of our personal resources, confronted perhaps with our own mortality and nothing in our hands that we can do about, then what happens is the, we are driven into a deeper reliance on the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit convinces us of the greater life we have in Jesus. It's kind of like we are hanging on to cornflakes and Jesus is offering us prime rib at the finest restaurant in town. And yet we need to let go of the cornflakes before we can receive the prime rib. In between the time when he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in June 2020 and when he passed away in, on May 19th, 2023, uh, Timothy Keller uh, kept as active as he could uh, given his health challenges. He wrote a book and uh, among the various things he did uh, during those three years was he gave an interview and during that interview he said this, I never want to go back to the prayer life I had before cancer. See, Timothy Keller had cancer two times. He had thyroid cancer when he was in his 50s and he said that uh, going through that experience helped him to learn how to pray the Psalms at a deeper level. Uh, what he learned specifically was how to meditate on uh, the Psalms. So, for example, if we look at uh, Psalm 103, verses 1 to 2, it says this, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who is the psalmist talking to? He's not talking to God. He's talking to his own soul. And he's saying, like, do you get it? Do you understand what God is saying here? Do you realize the gifts God is promising to you in his word? And so that's what he learned how to do during his experience with thyroid cancer was to read God's word, but then to meditate on it, and then to go to prayer. Before that, he would just think you need to read God's word and then go to prayer, but he realized the importance of meditation on God's word. And then at the age of 69, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, which if you have any kind of medical know-how, I understand that's one of the worst ones to get. 
and uh, the, your lifespan is usually measured in weeks after your diagnosis. And uh, he said this, I wish I'd been able to understand how mortal I am without getting cancer. Because you see, that was the gift when he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer that God gave him was to realize how mortal he was and then to start praying with an awareness of that mortality. So he said, I wish I'd been able to understand how mortal I am without getting cancer. Psalm 90 says, teach us to number our days so that we get a heart of wisdom. I know what that means now. There's a breakthrough in the way you look at everything. But he said, there's no way to get where I am now without going through the doctor saying, you're going to die from this. I wish there had been, but there wasn't. But I'm glad I am where I am. And so, dear friends, the challenge that I want to leave with you today is quite simply this. To practice meditating on God's word and let the Holy Spirit speak God's truth to your soul. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being our Savior, for dying and rising again, and for uh, sending the Holy Spirit so that as we live this life that we have in this world, a life where we live in your forgiveness, in your love, in the new life you have given us, we also have strength from the Holy Spirit to endure in the face of persecution and grief and sorrow over the brokenness in our own lives and in the lives of the people around us. And so we pray, Lord, that by your Spirit you would help us to be your people in this world, that you would shine your light through us, and that we would continue to live with confidence, not in ourselves, but in you. Because in you, we have the sure and certain hope of resurrection life. And dear Holy Spirit, may you please help us to live in the fullness of the life that Jesus gives. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask this. And all God's people said, Amen. So our vision as a church is to be a church that helps people of all generations to be passionate about, equipped for, and effective at transforming lives for the kingdom of God. Uh, it takes uh, all of our prayers, all of our time, and um, energy to working together to accomplish uh, some of those things that we are doing together. We're going to be talking about one of those things that we do as a group in our uh, semi-annual meeting. And I'm referring now to the settlement ministry, which is huge when you think about it. Uh, but it also takes some finances. So uh, you can go online or you can give uh, in person. There's a basket on the side table uh, to help um, uh, support the ministries that we do together. As we uh, turn to our prayer time, I'd like to give you just a few updates. First of all, on our ongoing uh, prayer list has been a young man by the name of Jake, and we've been praying for him for a while. He has fully recovered, and his family is very grateful uh, for our prayers. So thanks be to God to, for that. We'll be praying a prayer of thanksgiving uh, about that. Also, uh, Friday, June the 9th, was the one-year anniversary of the Tariq's arrival in Canada. Here was a cake that uh, we used to celebrate yesterday. Today, after worship, there's more cake. Yay, yeah. And some uh, Pakistani treats, uh, sweets. Uh, to, so come and uh, uh, share in those after the worship service. So we'll be praying a prayer of thanksgiving uh, for that as well. Now on the screen before you, you'll see a list of names of people that we're praying for on an ongoing basis. Um, 
please bring them to your mind as we start our time of prayer in silence. And I invite you to stand if you are able. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for all the people on our ongoing prayer list. You know the needs of each person, and we pray that you would provide for each one in the way that you know is best. Shower them with your love, grace, and mercy, and comfort and encourage them with your presence. Help them to know that they are forever safe with you. We pray, Lord, for peace in our troubled world, uh, we think of places like uh, Sudan and Ukraine, uh, but there's many places where there's war or violence uh, happening right now. We pray that the wars would come to an end and that your peace would reign. And most of all, we pray for the peace that surpasses all understanding to be upon more and more people as they look to the Prince of Peace in faith. May you make this happen somehow, Lord, and by your spirit through the many difficult challenges being faced in the world. We also pray for those who are impacted by wildfires in Canada. Uh, we pray for those who have lost their homes uh, and we uh, call out to you for restoration we ask for your protection over all who are fighting those fires. And um, most important of all, we ask for rain to fall upon your parched earth. We pray for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. And today we especially lift up Carson and his family as they grieve the death of his grandma, Emily. And we thank you, Lord, that in you we have that sure and certain promise of resurrection life. And so we pray that you would comfort all who grieve with your presence and your promise of life eternal in you. We pray for all those who need your healing touch. Uh, we pray especially for Lynn G, who broke her leg and is healing from surgery. We pray that uh, that healing would continue. We pray for Marga and we ask for uh, pain management for her and uh, increased mobility. Uh, we also lift up Glenn A, who has a blood clot in his leg, and Peter H, Emmanuel's nephew, who uh, is now uh, uh, at the point where he needs rehabilitation after brain surgery. And we ask for that uh, you would work through that. We also pray for healing from uh, the numbness he's experiencing and and we ask that you would help him to be able to sleep at night. Lord, wherever anyone experiences healing, we know that it comes from you. And so we look to you for the healing we need in this life, but we also uh, pray knowing that the ultimate healing that we all seek will come to us on the day when you raise us and everyone else who looks to you in faith from the dead. And so help us to be uh, strong and courageous, and we pray that you would be with our loved ones, that you would encourage them in body and in spirit, and help them to know that you are with them, that you love them, and that they are forever safe with you. We pray for the Christian church around the world. Uh, we especially pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ who are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you would Keep them strong, that you would protect them, and keep them safe, we pray. We pray also for all those who are serving as missionaries around the world. Uh, today we especially pray for Reverend Heng Kim Hai, who serves as pastor of Hope Lutheran Church in Kampong, Cambodia, and is also an instructor for the Garuna Christian School. We pray, Lord, that uh, for all who uh, carry the name of Jesus, you would uh, strengthen and encourage them by your spirit and provide what they need uh, 
to do the work you are calling them to do. And we ask that you would um, work in and through them and us with your power to draw the hearts of more and more people closer and closer to you. Lord, we pray uh, again today for all our volunteers. <clears throat> today we especially pray for those who serve on our prayer chain. Uh, we lift up Harvey and Kevin and Carol and uh, Linda A. Marlene, Helmut, Linda B. Jin, Carell, Emily, Jane, Tony, Lisa D. Debbie, Tracy, Susan E. Susan G. Lynn, Stephen G. Bryant, Brittany, Laura, Merlin, Pastor Carl, Donna, Rita, Janet, Arshad, Susan P., uh, Carolyn, Denise, Joy, and Tara. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for all of these volunteers who are uh, willing to um, lift up in prayer the cares and concerns, the special needs that come to us from time to time. And we thank you, Lord, for the way that you respond to our prayers with your love. And today we especially pray a prayer of thanksgiving uh, for the Treat family as they uh, celebrate the one-year anniversary uh, of their arrival here in Canada. And uh, we also pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, I may have done this already, but for Jake, thank you for the healing uh, that you have granted to him. Pray that you would continue to be with him in all the things of his life. We also ask that you would be with uh, each and every one of us in the personal ministry you've given us. Uh, guide us so that we can go and make disciples wherever you have placed us, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, where we work and where we pray. And Lord, we pray all of our spoken and silent prayers in Jesus' name, and we pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven. not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As our time of worshiping God together comes to an end and we go out into the world to share God's love with a broken and hurting world, go with this blessing from God. May the spirit of the Lord rest upon you, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And may the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you both now and forever. Amen.
have a few announcements, so if you can hold on just a moment, I guess Ryan's coming. Sorry. Okay. I was enjoying the song. <laughs> Should have been a little bit more with it. So we have just a couple announcements that we want to remind you about. So the first one is about the King Come trip. Um, so it's planned, uh, the plans are starting and uh, the mission trip is planned to be about on August 12th to 19th. For more information, please speak to Michelle. The next one is a super exciting one, is our semi-annual meeting. <laughs> it's taking place in the sanctuary today at about 11.30. So that's lots of time to go have cake, grab a coffee, uh, have some community time and then come on back. The next one is about our VBS in the park. Um, so that's planned to be on July 22nd at, from 11 till 3. We're looking for some people to help with planning this event. If you can help, please talk to Kathleen or email the church office at admin at wglc.org. And our last one, uh, last announcement today is about the confirmation questioning service. We will be holding a confirmation questioning service on Saturday, June 24th at 3 p.m. And everyone is welcome to come. Thank you and be blessed on your, on your day. Thank you.